Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome to this special edition of the program titled Chiropractic Spotlights, Meet America's Leading Chiropractors. I'm Mark Imperial. My next guest is Dr. Keta Patel from Excel Wellness Center in Prairieville, Louisiana. Dr. Patel, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. So, Dr. Patel, please introduce yourself, give us the name of your practice, and tell us about the types of clients that you serve. Okay, so I am Dr. Keta Patel. I am the owner and founder of Excel Wellness Center. Um, so I am a chiropractic physician, and I also practice functional medicine. Um, the types of clients, let's see, um, people, basically people who are looking for a natural way of gaining their best health possible. You know, people who've um, tried so many different things, conventional way of taking care of their their health issues, but they're just not able to find that root cause and feel well, feel alive, I like to put it. Or people, you know, who just want to get off their medication and then feel like they have that hope. That's the type of clientele I look for. Gotcha. Now, you mentioned a specialty in functional medicine as well. Can you tell me a little bit about that and how that connects with chiropractic and helping your, uh, sure. your patients? Yes, of course. So as a chiropractor, we're considered a holistic practitioners. So we always believe in lifestyle, nutrition, eating right, you know, just living a healthy life to, to achieve the, the best health possible. So this goes hand in hand because functional wellness gets you, uh, you know, in that, in that, that uh, status, sorry, where you feel like you have, you know, a grasp on your own health, you're independent, you feel empowered enough because you're not relying on medication. You're actually changing your lifestyle via eating the right foods, incorporating the right supplements, you know, um, exercising, working on your stress levels, and things like that, and we're able to help each of our clients by coaching them, kind of holding their hands, because people need that. When they're going through this journey, it's not easy, especially because we're so used to just being, oh, take medication, it'll fix things. It's a quick fix versus this is not a quick fix, but it is a long-term, um, you know, goal, you know, that you can have the optimal health and you can gain maybe 5, 10, 20 years where you're going to feel like you're actually living, you know, you're not just sitting back watching other people live or, you know, you know, I always put an example for a grandparent, for grandparents, you don't want to just sit back and watch your grandkids play. You want to involve yourself and get on the floor and play with them. So that's this type of stuff that I'm able to do with functional wellness. And they go hand in hand because obviously they're both holistic. Um, you know, I always say chiropractic helps me take care of my patients externally, you know, aches and pains, versus the functional wellness helps me take care of their inside, you know, so inside and out care. Yeah, could you tell me a little bit more about that specifically? Like, uh, we understand that chiropractic is about the external and the moving of bones and adjustments, uh, but the functional medicine, I, I don't think a lot of people know a lot about that. What is that? What in, what's involved with functional medicine? Okay, so we always, as functional medicine is to change the function of your body, right? So getting to the root cause, and instead of fixing just the symptoms, we really get down to the root cause. For example, you know, uh, you know, patients suffering from thyroid for years and years, they're taking thyroid medication, and that's what they're told. You'll have to take this for life. Well, we never look into the fact that what caused the thyroid to not function well in the first place? Why cover those symptoms? And instead, why not find out what's going on? Maybe it's your liver that's not functioning well. Maybe it's your gut that's not functioning well. So let's get to that root cause by using, you know, state-of-the-art different labs, uh, you know, uh, to get to find those markers and figure out what's going on with that that clientele. And then fix that. Once we do that, everything else falls into place. So it's really getting to that root cause is what functional medicine is about. It's not covering up the symptoms. It's actually taking care of the whole system. Um, I tell patients, hey, I know you're coming in for diabetes or, or thyroid or blood pressure, whatever it is. That's not the only thing I will treat. It's going to be from head to toe. I have to fix you as a whole person. Um, and then 
that's what functional medicine is all about. Oh, that's terrific. Now, you know, we're doing this program because although chiropractic has been around for so long, we feel that there's still a lot of misinformation and misconceptions and myths out there about it. So I wanted to ask you, what are some of the biggest myths or misconceptions that you've heard people say about chiropractic? Um, So I get this asked repeatedly. Once you go to chiropractor, you're going to have to go chiropractic, you know, to a chiropractor all the time. Well, here's the reason. It's not that you're going to have to, but it's, it's so important for you. So when we help you fix, you know, your aches and pains, it's not just about the aches and pains. We were trying to do a, you know, help you maintain that as well. When we adjust, which is basically what people call, you know, cracking your back or popping your back, when we adjust or manipulate your back, we're actually helping all the stimulation that you need, you know, the signaling between brain and your spinal cord um, and to your body parts. We're actually helping all of that to function well. Now, if we just fix it, fix it for you for that once or twice, you know, visit and then just say, okay, you're well. Well, there's so many other aspects that take in place when you go to work, when maybe you had another injury. Things are always changing. So why not get on a, on a maintenance plan so you can keep all those things fixed and, and, and keep yourself well. So it's not that, mis- you know, the, the myth that you have to go to a chiropractor all the time. That's how it works. Or you're going to get hooked on it as in that's how they work. It's because your health relies on it. You, so when you buy a new car, do you not do a maintenance, regular maintenance on it? Absolutely. You do. You don't just, yeah. So you don't just go for an oil change once and then it's going to be fine until the car literally dies out. You have a regular maintenance. So this is basically the same thing. Instead of waiting till something terrible happens, maintain it, you know, by going to a chiropractor and getting adjusted and, and, and getting through your aches and pains at the same time and feeling well. Dr. Patel, how did you get started? What inspired you to become a DC? So it started when I was in high school and my mom had gone um, through therapy and, you know, it really uh, made a big impact on me to see her in pain. And next thing, you know, after therapy, after getting the right treatments, getting well. Um, And she had gone to a PT. So I was uh, very excited and I told my brother and my brother said well it's a great thing you can be a PT that's amazing but why not look into chiropractics because then you can see your own patients you can not only do all the rehab all the therapies but you can do so much more because you'll have you know better uh, as a doctor you'll be able to add on so many other modalities so I looked into it and I literally fell in love with it because it's the concept right getting people well naturally, holistically, and really teach them what our, our, our great, great, great grandparents lived like, right? You know, they didn't rely on medications. They relied on, you know, doing exercise and keeping your body well and eating the right foods. So it's being able to do all that really got me motivated to um, get into chiropractics. So before I ask you my final question, is there anything sure. important that you'd like to share that I didn't think to ask you? Um, yes. Um, so I, 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 this is something uh, I'm very proud of and I was super duper excited over the summer. I was invited to speak at, um, Harvard club of Boston and I spoke in front of uh, nearly 120 plus entrepreneurs and they weren't necessarily, you know, health related, um, business, um, owners, but just to see, um, the common denominator between all of them and their success that really inspired me and and I was so honored to be there and speak about my big why, why I started um, practicing not just chiropractic but functional wellness. Um, so that was uh, something that I really, really feel proud to let people know that, hey, I had an opportunity and I met so many great, wonderful people and the common denomina- denominator that I um, realized and I've, you know, got to learn is they all care. They weren't just in, in, in their business to just make money. They all care for their clients. And that's a very big on me too. You know, um, my, what sets me apart really is the fact that I like to take my time with each of my clientele and I like to give them the care that they deserve. I like to listen to them and really understand them. 
So that's something I want to highlight that, uh, you know, I, I love doing that and um, giving people that hope that, you know, I understand you're on medications, you still feel miserable, but there's hope you can get off of it and, and feel amazing. Well, that's terrific. And congratulations, Dr. Patel, on that. So Thank you. for the folks that are listening to us and, and would like to get more information and perhaps meet with you, how can people find you? So they can find me, um, they can go on my website, which is www.drketa.com. Um, they can visit my Facebook page, which is Excel Wellness Center. Instagram, it's at Excel Wellness Center with one L, it's E-X-C-E-L Wellness Center. And Twitter, which is at Excel Wellness One. Um, and worst comes, or not worst comes worst, but if they really want to speak to me, they can always call me at 225-733-1500. Dr. Patel, thank you so much for sharing this great information with us and for all of our listeners. I really wish you well and success for all of your patients now and into the future. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm Mark Imperial, and this is the program spotlighting noteworthy professionals, experts, and business owners from around the world and in your town. If you know a great business or professional that we should feature on the program, I'd like to hear from you. You could nominate them by emailing me at radio at markimperial.com. Once again, that's radio at markimperial.com. In this next segment, our home stretch, I've got a special treat for you. If you're a business owner or professional, or if you aspire to be one, for over seven years, I've been interviewing leading experts and business celebrities and sharing their secrets to success with you. From my first show, Entrepreneur's Edge, to Game Changers Radio, to Mad Rocket Business, all the way to Remarkable Radio and this program today, in this home stretch, I'm bringing you a flashback to one of my most popular episodes, covering how to attract clients magnetically using only the power of words and without costly branding. So enjoy this very special edition home stretch, and here we go. Now, get the edge. Here are Mark and Tom. Hey, welcome to the show. It's Mark Imperial, another power thinking hour here at Entrepreneur's Edge. Mark, this is Tom Rebar, and uh, it is time for all the capitalists and all of the entrepreneurs and the self-employed people and the professionals in private practice and all the sales and marketing pros to come out of the woodwork and put their feet up and uh, join together right. and uh, learn for an hour. That's right. So welcome back, everybody. And we've got a terrific show. We're recapping a fantastic week that we had here at Entrepreneur's Edge. We just had our Entrepreneur's Edge live event last Wednesday. And boy, it was a hoot. The party was jumping. I'm telling you, they almost had to kick us out of the hotel. They did. And uh, there's nothing like talking about advertising and copywriting that gets people out of their chairs. Because once you start talking about that, people realize that even if you thought you knew everything there was to know about it, you realize there's more to learn and more to still learn. Yeah, the place was absolutely on fire. We had Conrad Hall and Ken Schreiber join us in speaking on copywriting and writing the words that sell your business. What better way to get to the bullet points of that than to recap what we talked about at Wednesday's event? Go for and, it. And you know what? In, in fact, if some if you if you missed it, you really missed a, a hugely valuable opportunity to boost your response. Because I'm talking about, you know, we talked about headlines and, and postcard and copy that that got four to five times the response of a, of another of another control. So that's a four hundred to five hundred percent increase by just changing the words on the paper. How many folks don't think about that? A whole bunch. So we started out. You know, one of our guest speakers, Ken Schreiber, he was talking about lead generation and the minute differences about generating leads with your copy as opposed to like using sales conversion. Now, uh, one of the key points and takeaways he talked about, he started out, check this out. He started, the first thing he said when he got up on the stage is he said, who here wants a surefire way to get new customers or prospects without any marketing cost? And all the hands went up, right? Mine went up. Yeah. I was the first one. Now, guess what? He says that was the first lesson in lead generation. You are trying to identify exactly with the person, what is it that they want? So if you have the right market, the right list, and then you give them that question, who wants this solution? 
and you're talking directly at a person and they, they raise their hand and identify. That is it. That's as simple as that. And then you make them an offer that they just can't refuse. Because all you want is to find out who those people are who are willing to raise their hand. Yeah. And you could adapt that into any business type that you can. You know, now look at this. He all, you know, another key is speaking directly at that, uh, that target person. If you, if you get a list, if you're doing a mailing, a postcard mailing, and you know who that customer is you're looking for, you identify it, and you speak directly at their problems. You have to identify, and we talked about this, I call it the hidden benefit. Because you have to you think about your customer and think of all the problems that they have in their lives, because what you are is you're a problem solver. That brings up another point. A lot of business owners, a lot of businesses out there, they make the mistake. And we had some folks talk about this in the room as well. They, you know, I say, what is your ad about? What, what was the message you put in your marketing? And they said, well, a discount, you know, a discount or percentage off. And the reality is, uh, is that you, they're, they're trying to sell their product directly. And we say you know, that that kind of hurts your response because when you try to sell your product directly, the only people that are responding are those that are ready to buy like your widget or your thing right now. At that immediate point in time. So it's about transcending timing. So we're going to be back after this break and continue because we've got a lot of nuggets that came out of that event on writing words that sell. BusinessEdgeRadio.com. Go to the website, get our free gift, and we'll be right back after this. Stay with us. Business owners and entrepreneurs. Once again, here's Mark and Tom. Hey, welcome back to your Power Thinking Hour for entrepreneurs and business owners. It's Mark Imperial. This is Tom Rebar. Hey, Mark, let's go back to that uh, uh, the story you were telling right before the break about the person who was going for the jugular and trying to make the big sale right out of the gate. Um, let's try to make sure we bring the loop fully closed there. What do you do to get around that? Well, let's see. Let, you know, as I mentioned, a lot of business owners, you know, they think, you know, they're not, you know, they're in the mindset of I got to sell my thing. So they're focused on how can I sell my thing? Let me present my product or my service and let me uh, give a discount or a coupon. That's like the knee jerk reaction to what you, what, you know, what they're offering. And then and, when people don't buy, they right away, they think, my price is still too high, so they get into this headset of, now I got a further discount. Yeah, they're focusing on the wrong thing, and it's because they get a low response rate. But our answer to that, what we know from testing, is that the low response rate is because you're not transcending timing. You're making an offer for people that are ready to buy right that minute. But then when somebody is in the buying cycle, but they're not just quite ready to buy yet, and you know maybe a month down the road, they forgot all about you. You're only picking up the immediate buyers. You have to find a way to transcend the timing, and we do that with lead generation. And it has nothing to do with price. So That's right. get price out of your head that it's not that your price is too high. That's often the last thing to even consider is the price. I mean, the example that I'm going to give you and for the listeners is uh, we had a terrific home remodeling company in the audience and uh, asked us how do we directly link what we're talking about here at the event to his type of business. I said, is there a business that feels like they don't know how to link this lead generation strategy to theirs? And then he raised his hand and he said, you know, home remodeling. What, what do I do? And I said, what are you doing currently to get your business? He said, I did a mailing. Um, what was the offer on the mailing? It was a, a discount of some sort. And we told him the same thing. You're, you're selling a discount. You're only going to pick up the buyers ready to buy now. And then he said, well, what's the alternative? Well, the alternative is you want to find people that may not just be thinking about buying right now, but maybe they're already in their head. You know what? Six months from now, a year from now, I know I'm going to have a move. How are you going to get those people to, to identify themselves so you can continue to stay in front of them? Well, we said, why don't you offer a, a report? A report called, you know, the seven deadly traps and how to avoid them, how to save blah, blah, blah on your uh, remodeling costs, how to get, a, you know, uh, uh, how to remodel your kitchen, your, your home or whatever and save the maximum seven deadly traps, a report that is going to be useful to that prospect. That way, even if it's six months or a year from now that they're thinking about the move, they still want that free report that that little trick alone increases the response to four or five times. Easily, easily. And um, and you could tell that this fella, because I was I was sitting across the room from him. He, he had a big smile on his face as soon as you started to unveil that story, because you could tell right away he got it mm -hmm. and had kind of went back into a. 
Oh, that makes sense right away to him. So That's right. He was a very smart person. Yeah. So, you know, back to the list of uh, what Ken Shriver was speaking about, he's, you know, another nugget was speak directly at him. Who is it that you're mailing to and what is their direct problem? The next point is that, the, you know, everyone's favorite radio station besides WIND is WIIFM. What's in it for me? Exactly. So that, you know, literally the headline or the message that you put on your, your mailing page pieces has to address directly at them because it has to pass that test. You know, Conrad Hall mentioned this, the so what test. You read your headline, whatever you consider your headline, and run it through your own head and say, okay, I read something and so what? You know, is it going to make you say so what or is it going to intrigue you to read further? Well, in fact, he even suggested do that for every one of your bullets. When you put the bullet there, just read it out loud and say, now, so what? What is that person going to answer if they read it? And you say, so what, to give you give yourself a chance to substantiate that bullet in your head. Yes, that's right. Is it a worthy bullet? Yep. And you know, I have a litmus test actually for you. Let's, you know, let's, first of all, let's wrap up with what Conrad was talking about before you even go into the litmus test on headlines. But, you know, Conrad has a great description for copywriting. He said, it's the art of using words to create action. Now think about that. The art of using words to create action. How many folks really think of their advertising in that way? The most of the time I see people uh, put, uh, doing an advertisement, it's like the name of their company or their logo. How does that create any action? One of the, um, one of the best testimonials for last night was I brought my assistant along to your summit. He is just beginning to think about the art of copywriting. And when we left, he said that was one of the best meetings he's ever been to. And he got more notes in a short period of time about how to write copy than he ever thought he would by coming along last night. It's incredible. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that, you know, many of our pros in Mastermind, for example, they we take it for granted because we, we've been so uh, immersed in this kind of marketing, but it's eye opening for many. Um, you know, for example, one of the keys, the big keys that was huge for everyone in the room was when Ken Schreiber discovered, described. And remember the headline, who else here wants to know how to acquire new customers uh, and, and, and prospects without any acquisition cost? Right, right? right. Now, how do you do it without acquisition cost? Well, if you were at the summit, I don't have enough time in the next four minutes to tell you, but you can do, you know, he, it was a brilliant strategy he had about uh, liquidating your, your marketing costs. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be at Entrepreneur's Edge live events. And these are the kind of things that we talk about. So, uh, you know, this is probably the best time ever to give a plug for the next live event. Make sure you go to Business Edge Live or businessedgeradio.com, click on the live events tab, and you're going to find the next meeting in Madison, the next meeting in Green Bay, and the next meeting in Oak Brook. Hey, we've only got about a minute here, and I want to talk about one bullet. I have about 12 here. Go ahead. But let's talk about the headline, because that is, what is the headline? The headline of your ad is the ad for your ad. Does that make sense? It, the, and what is the only job of the headline? The only job of the headline is to shout it out and get somebody to be interested in taking the next step, which is to read the what else is there. Read the next line. Absolutely. And it's the most valuable real estate on your ad or your postcard or your mailing. And what do most companies inadvertently waste in that space? What do they do in that space instead? How many people put the name of their company or their logo up at the top of the ad or the top of their website, and then they wonder why nobody's reading it. It's because they never had a headline there. Hey, in the wrap-up, I'm going to give my litmus test for great headlines for, for all the listeners. After the break, Tom Apicella from Think Spaces in Naperville, Illinois, will be joining us to give us his tips, tricks, and secrets for furnishing your office. We'll be right back at businessedgeradio.com. We'll be here. Stay with us. BusinessEdgeRadio.com for all the events. Hey, we're back. It's Mark Imperial. And this is Tom Rebar. We are in the home stretch again, Mark. 
I can't believe another week has gone by so fast. <laughs> That's right. Hey, we're back here with Tom Apicella from Think Spaces in, in Naperville, Illinois. Hey, Tom, I wanted to ask you, you just recently joined our mastermind group here at Entrepreneur's Edge. Can you tell me what drew you to the group and what you're getting out of it so far? Well, um, what, what group drew me to the mastermind group is, you know, I, I want to have a uh, other like mind entrepreneurs and um, people that I can I can basically bounce ideas off of, talk about my business to help expand it. Um, you know, because as a lot of people know, there's a lot of businesses in one business that you can extrapolate from. Um, so, you know, just having that. And then it's also, you know, for accountability when you come up with new strategies and ideas, uh, you, you know. There's some accountability because they're going to ask you, you know, well, what did you do with what you said you were going to do with last month? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, action is the way to make things happen in business. Now, that's terrific. And now for the folks listening, whether they're a property manager or a business owner looking to move or improve their spaces, how can they get a hold of you for your information? You can go to thinkspaces.net and uh, you can fill out one of our interior design contact forms or uh, there's a phone number on there that you can call uh, 630 324 Four five nine eight. Tom, it was terrific having you on the show. Thank you for coming out today. Thanks for having me, guys. Enjoy the show. Terrific. Thank you. Tom, we're on the home stretch now. We are. I can't believe it. Now, I promised a litmus test for people to test whether their headlines are any good. So, give them. All right, here it is. Now, this is sort of like the classified test, if you think of like a classified ad. And what are the classified ads all about? It's, it's usually a small, tiny little ad, right? Very small. With with just, you don't have enough room to put anything but a blurb and a call to action, a CTA, like a phone number, right? That's exactly right. So what you do is you take whatever you think is your headline, and then you neuter out everything else and just put your your uh, phone number or whatever your response mechanism is under it. And if the two make sense and entice you to move forward, like let me give you an example. What do most people use as their headline that's wrong? And we tell you, but we talk about this a lot. The company, company name, Company right? name and maybe a logo. So let's look at the litmus test. A to Z painting, phone number. Now, is that entice you to take any action? So who'd call with A to Z painting and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? That's right. Isn't, there's no words that cause action. Now, what if the headline, let me, you know, let me think just off of the top of my head here. Let's use a, a, an example for a, a bowling alley, okay? <laughs> Something weird. Now, what if the headline said how to bowl a 300 every time uh, and then a phone number? Now, th- that causes you a little bit more enticement to call that number. Sure so would. there's a difference between the, you know, that's the litmus test. Take your headline and put just the headline and the phone number or response mechanism and is that enough to make somebody take some action? That's the litmus test. test. Great test. So, so that now, makes every word ho- count. Hopefully nobody just puts that in an ad, a headline and a phone number. It would be nice to have a little more copy than that. But I understand what the litmus test is. Yes, absolutely. So that's what we talked about. The, and it's about all the time we had to talk about today was headlines. But yes. it's the most important piece. What else do we know about headlines? Headlines can, are, are the most important part of the ad. You, you remember at the event... Uh, we, I gave you three headlines that were tested and I'll tell you what, let's do the test right now. One of the headlines got five times the response of the other two. Was it headline A, I've never been able to get a good portrait of my child until now, or B, finally a children's portrait worth more than the paper it's printed on, or C, the best children's portrait at the right price guaranteed. You know, we did this test. People raised their hand. The room was about split. But the answer is B. And again, we said, what's the reason why? Everyone gave reasons that they thought why B won. But the truth is, it doesn't matter. You just have to test. Test. And everybody's afraid to test. And guess what? They didn't change any other part of the your customer. Just the headline. Hey, go out to businessedradio.com. We've got, we got war, um, excuse me, we have Wayne Breitbath coming this next month in March up in Green Bay and Madison. He's going to talk about business use of LinkedIn. Unbelievable ideas. So come and see us. See you later. Hey, it's Mark Imperial. I hope you enjoyed those highlights. Again, if you know a professional or business that we should feature on the show, you could nominate them by emailing me at radio at markimperial.com. One more time, that's radio at markimperial.com. Until next time, this is Mark Imperial. Make it a remarkable week. 
Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.